Hi everybody, it's mentor jeweler Joel McFadden and I'm getting ready to head out for another trip to a jewelry show to run my design competition. But I thought I would answer a question from the Let's Make Jewelry Facebook page about wax carving and that's specifically about tools. So I thought I would show everybody the tools that I use most common when I'm doing wax carving. And there's a few essentials that you don't really think about. Um, what I have here is your typical green wax ring bar and this is one of the most essential tools to me and that is this slicer so what we'll do is it's a matte box cutter and a lot of times i really just want to start with nice flat surfaces so we'll just slide this in here like this and then it comes with this lock it down comes with this uh, saw that's specifically designed for this and we'll just saw it where we need it when you're carving wax what's important is that you break it down into two dimensions and then you add the third dimension as you go if you try to just wing it a lot of times Things like ring sizes and whatnot, they're off. So we'll cut through here real quick. So, what I have now is I have a perfectly squared off blank. And one of the things I do, you'll notice, is that I have a piece of fabric or a sock will work really well that I keep over my bench. And uh, that keeps me from scratching and marring up my wax. Right now it's not a big issue, but in the future it will be. So the next tool, like this is pretty thick, so this would be like for a man's ring. Or we can do something thinner. We'll just, should I cut another one that's thinner? I'm asking you. Yeah. Probably. So I'm gonna cut another one here real quick so you can just see how this works. So we're just gonna make our thickness here and you can get your leverage gauge and figure out how thick you want your piece to be and cut a little bit more than you need so I'm going to measure that lock it here lock it there and then we'll cut it again so this would be about right for a lady's a lady's ring and if you're doing earrings, what you want to do is make them twice as thick as the earring eventually will be, and then cut it in half. So you make it two-sided. All right, so now we've got something that's about the size of a lady's signet ring. The second step obviously is to try to get the finger size so what i like to use is i like to use one of these reamers it's just a little matte wax ring reamer and it's got the ring sizes these are not exact so you have to estimate so basically what i'll do is i'll put it here and just slowly turn it and as you turn it you can see it's carving carving out the ring so the two most important things that we're going to get here is we're going to get the thickness or the width of the ring figured out that's here and now we're going to get the ring size figured out and that's here and let's go to like a six and this is giving me a hard time here it's biting fast forward through some of this so this video doesn't take forever today wax carving has been replaced a lot by computer-aided design 
and fabricating and metal, but wax carving still is a real art. And I love seeing people do it, do a good job of it. So as we get closer, we're getting a smoother turn and we want to flip it around and do the other side. And we always want to check it with a real mandrel. So we're at size six right on right there. All right. The next thing is, the third thing I like to use is, here's my flex shaft. You always want to save one of your original um, flex shaft handles. Okay, say again. So we use a rotary file uh, or a drum file uh, that's coarse. And this is a fantastic tool. I probably do 80% of my wax carving work with this. You can also use this to clean up the inside of a ring. If you've sized a ring and you need to, to, to file the inside, this is a great way to file the inside. So this is one of the reasons I say always keep one of your original number 30 hand pieces because we can chuck this guy in here And I refer to that because most of the time I use my quick releases, but the quick release won't work with this. And then I use a wax trimmer, which I actually helped to develop with Kate Wolf. And here's two of them. Um, this is a Kate Wolf wax trimmer and it's fantastic. And what this does is this, now my drum slides through here and it turns this into sort of like a wax lathe. So what this does, now my piece is flat and I've got my wax leaf. So what we could do is we could, you know, I'm not going to get into the details of it, but you could mark off what you want your ring to look like this way and then simply carve it. Like this to get it two dimensionally what you want. So this is going to give me a two-dimensional shape and it takes, it takes some time. I'm pushing it here and it's a little messy. But as you can see here, this rotary file cuts pretty nice and it's I know this is a little awkward looking but you know we are eventually creating a pretty nice shape we'll just cut into this a little bit more all right we just did that a second ago. now if you want to be real creative there are ways to mount this to your desk so you only have to use one hand but I'm usually pretty quick with this so then once I get this and because I'm just so used to I'm going to switch back to my uh, quick release once you get this two-dimensionally what you want you can easily take the same tool and put it in here and now if you put your thumb on the ring you can start get some speed up you can start shaping your piece So we're doing like a little dome here. You can start just shaping a little bit at a time. If you want to like put a little bevel on the inside, you can do that. 
You can also use this to cut grooves. If you want to cut a groove into a ring. So there's so much I can do with this. I use this tool just a tremendous amount. Um, the other tool that I use a lot of times once we get some detail there is I'll use a two-sided, I believe these are called, uh, they're wax files. I think they're vadium or something like that. But you can use this and you can start hand shaping things. I know this ring is a joke, but I'm just trying to show everybody the techniques that we use. And then, of course, there's the coarse side and the fine side. So you can use this to just start shaping your wax up. And those are, so those are the primary tools that I use on a regular basis. Um, I, there's been some talk about you need this tool, you need that tool, you need all these different tools, but those are the primary tools for wax carving. Now, when you get into detail work, I'm going to show you these. These are a whole set that I made of tools, and like, here's an interesting one. This is a, a channeler or a, a grabber, and you can see it's got a little curved piece out of here. And you can take this. And you can just drag it. You're going to need optics to see what you're doing. But you could drag it to carve. You can use the edge to carve another groove. Or I can use this tool, which is sort of like an edged knife to do things. All these tools do different things. But what's interesting about these tools in particular is what I did is I went out and I bought a long piece of dowel and I cut it up into these sections, drilled a hole in it. The metal parts are all made from bicycle spokes. And the little foam parts, which sort of tells me what kind of tool I have, like, like these tools are both um, curved cutters. And so they both have the little purple these are just pencil supports that you buy at a office store. So these tools are pretty cool to make. You're not videoing. Oh, you are videoing, Never mind. These tools are, are pretty cool to make. And another one is, this is a tool and it's essentially a end of a spiral saw blade stuck into a piece and you can actually you can actually saw with it if you need to. And when you start getting into really delicate pieces, this is a real beauty. So a few other things that I use frequently is this is drywall sandpaper, uh, drywall finishing paper. And it's fantastic if you want to level out your piece see it'll put a nice surface on there and you can use it any way you want and then just knock the residue out of it so that works great and uh, occasionally I'll use a wax pen but the only thing I use a wax pen for is when I'm sprueing up a ring like you know here's a model so if we were going to sprue this model up I would use the wax pen to attach it to the tree. Hang on a second. I have a tree here. So for example, you know, here's a wax. I would use the wax pen just to attach this down here. Just hold the button and do it. But I really don't use this a whole lot. And you can um, make... Um, make just a metal one out of uh, a solder pick or one of these uh, tools and just heat it under a candle and then just attach it that way too. So um, then I've got these wax carving tools which are actually dental tools and I honestly rarely, rarely ever use these. I just, they just don't get used very much. I bought them because they looked really cool. And when I got right down to it, we just don't use them. So 
Again, it's one of the tools I use the most. By the way, I keep all of my wax stuff separate. This is the candle that I use for when I'm heating up, you know, tools. I'll just uh, use that. And I'll take my long tool here and heat the end of it up. And that way I can connect my wax to whatever I need to for the sprue. Um, sort of an all over the place video, but again, let's, the, you know, what are my main tools? My main tool is this. This is the thing that carves 80% of the waxes. Um, the inside reamer that gets me a ring the right shape. And my, uh, my matte box lathe. Those are the things I use the most. So, I'm sorry, I'm wiggling stuff again. So, if you're going to start carving more waxes, that's definitely the three tools. And I guess I would probably add the two-sided wax file. That's probably the, the fourth tool. And then you can make yourself carvers out of all sorts of things. And uh, that's, that's the, the tip for the day. So thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.